These are the M4 and M4 Pro Mac Minis, and outside of the price, there's a lot less difference between these than you might think. In terms of raw processing power and specs, the M4 Pro is clearly the better of the two, but having used both of these configurations now over the last 10 months or so, it's only in a few specific instances where that seems to be noticeable. Today, I want to go over what those instances are, where the regular M4 starts to feel limiting, and on the flip side, just how close these are in terms of performance and usability. So with that said, let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Since the newest Mac Mini came out last fall, I've had a ton of requests to compare the M4 and the M4 Pro versions. And I think that makes sense given that it's not exactly clear what each of them can do. I know we have access to benchmarks and on paper performance between them, but these days those seem to be a lot less relevant and you kind of have to use them in your own workflow to really understand if they're going to work. This year I've been fortunate enough to have tested out almost every Mac with a bunch of different workflows, which has given me a pretty good feel for both of these. And I think now is as good a time as any to compare them given what I've learned. For starters, they obviously look exactly the same, which wasn't previously the case on the older M2 and M2 Pro minis. The M2 Pro had a couple more USB-C ports over the M2 model, but the M4 series minis both have two USB-C ports on the front, three on the back, along with an HDMI and Ethernet port, but the specs on those ports are quite different. The ports on the front of each are both 10 gigabit USB 3.2 ports, but the back USB-C ports on the M4 are Thunderbolt 4, while the M4 Pro version are Thunderbolt 5. Thunderbolt 5 has twice the data transfer speed, or three times the bandwidth for using a high performance monitor, which sounds like a lot, but in reality, it's very hard to tell the difference between the two. I've mentioned this in multiple videos now, but Thunderbolt 4 already gives you an incredible amount of speed at up to 40 gigabits per second, and I don't know that I've honestly ever noticed any perceivable gains with the 80 gigabit speeds I get from Thunderbolt 5, even having used it for 10 months now. Data transfer speeds for most things are almost instant on either machine when connected to Thunderbolt SSDs, and a decent external Thunderbolt 4 drive will actually outperform the base Mac Mini's internal drive, which is also slower than the 1TB drive that's in this M4 Pro variant, but again, most of the time, that's not perceivable either. The storage itself does become a factor which we'll get into in a bit, but outside of raw transfer speed on those ports, the M4 Pro version will technically have better monitor support where it can support up to three 6K displays at once, and the M4 can only support two 6K monitors along with one 5K, but for 99.9% .9 of people, that's not going to make any difference. Outside that, connectivity remains exactly the same. The Ethernet port is configurable up to 10 gigs on both of these. For wireless, each have Bluetooth 5.3 that I've had zero issues with, and Wi-Fi 6E that has great speed, with absolutely no issues. You can start to notice some real differences when we get into performance with some more nuanced workflows, but before we hop into that, while we're on the topic of network connectivity, I want to take a minute to talk about this week's sponsor, Surfshark. As someone who is constantly researching new products, downloading software, and creating content, especially in the summertime where I'm on the go a lot, I'm always connected to random networks. Coffee shops, hotels, you name it. Without a VPN, on those networks, all that data can be visible to anyone on the same network. And sometimes the data on those networks is sold to third parties, so not ideal. Surfshark essentially creates a tunnel where your data is protected from that. And also, say if I'm trying to access region-locked content for research, maybe reviewing international apps or seeing how different services perform that are geo-locked, I can easily get around that with Surfshark. It just runs quietly in the background, making everything I do safer and more flexible. And if you want to try it out for yourself, head over to surfshark.com slash Ericsson or use code Ericsson at checkout to get an extra four months of Surfshark VPN. And they've got a 30 day money back guarantee. So there is no risk of giving it a shot. So coming back to performance, 
Like I said, these are going to feel shockingly similar for a lot of things, but first of all, I should mention the configurations on each of these machines because they are quite different. The M4 Mini that I have here is the base model with a 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 256 gigs of storage, and 16 gigs of RAM, while the M4 Pro has a 14 core CPU, 20 core GPU, 1 terabyte of storage, and 48 gigs of RAM. So there is a substantial gap between them, but I do have a MacBook Air M4 here with 512 gigs of storage and 16 gigs of RAM, and an M4 Pro MacBook with 24 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, which generally gives me good context for filling any gaps in performance or configurations. That being said, if we're just talking about basic use, Things like browsing the web, watching content, or running office or productivity apps, the base M4 Mini has more than enough power to do any of those things. My wife has been using the base M4 iMac with the exact same configuration since the fall for doing those types of things and literally never had an issue. And even when we get into more demanding workflows, you can push this thing pretty far. For instance, if we start off with some design work, I can open up some of the design tools that I use like Affinity Designer or Figma, and this works fantastic where there's no bottlenecks or lag, and even when I move into more resource heavy apps like Affinity Photo and Lightroom, those work just fine as well. Now, if I was doing a bunch of batch photo processing with raw images, or if I try and use all these apps at once working on a bunch of larger files, this base Mac Mini will start to freak out a bit with memory warnings where I may have to bump up that specific spec. But with regular usage in any of these apps, this base M4 has absolutely no issues. That carries over to software development as well. If I pull down this web project that I've been working on that uses Docker to run both backend and frontend services, the M4 has absolutely no issues with that and additional frontend development running at the same time. And similarly, if I move to mobile development, whether that be native iOS code or something like React Native, both run without a hitch, and it's only when I start running very complex or large projects that the M4 starts to feel like it's not quite enough. Say, if I spin up Android Studio with a resource-heavy emulator and I've got some kind of complex backend for it, any scenario similar to that, or if I've got a code base that just takes a very long time to compile, the M4 Pro will compile about 30 to 40% faster and can shave minutes off build times. But again, for small to medium sized software projects, the regular M4 feels super smooth and is really all you need. That might be different, say, if you were doing some game development or something where you're relying a lot more on the GPU. I don't have a whole lot of experience with that specifically, but with CPU focused work, it is quite difficult to tell the difference between them in most use cases. For myself, it's when I start getting into my video editing process that I start to feel a bit more separation, and that has been a fairly recent development. I've been editing these videos in Final Cut Pro for about four years, and it's usually a pretty basic workflow. Up until the last couple of months, all my footage would have been 10-bit H.265 4K footage from my Sony cameras, where I'd have a couple of tracks in my timeline with the occasional effect added and some color wheels. And if that's all all you're doing, the actual editing process doesn't feel any different between the M4 and the M4 Pro. Scrolling timelines and playback feel largely the same, and even when rendering, the M4 Pro goes just a little bit faster than the M4. That's in large part because both of these have the exact same media engine encoders and decoders, which will usually be the bottleneck when working with footage like that. But recently, I've been playing around with more demanding effects, both in video and audio, that have significant effects on performance. With video, I found that effects that stack a ton of layers to manipulate the image can bog things down if you start combining them, especially with footage from my Lumix S12 that uses 5.9K 10-bit video. The M4 really slows down and struggles with those effects added, where the M4 Pro is 
is a lot more usable. When those effects aren't present, things go back to being smooth on both, and just keep in mind that those effects probably aren't the greatest in terms of optimization. So I would say that they are partially at fault there, but even more established, well-developed plugins that rely on the GPU do feel a lot smoother on the M4 Pro. Similarly, when I process audio for these videos, I've got somewhat of a complex set of adjustments that process a lot quicker on the M4 Pro, which will save me some time and is quite noticeable. Again, it still runs fine on the regular M4, but you are sacrificing some time there. But I would say that unless you're planning on doing very resource intensive work with content creation, or maybe you're in a professional setting, the M4 is probably all you need. When it boils down to it, it's just when you're really focusing on GPU heavy work, where the M4 Pro is clearly better. Apps like Blender both run a lot smoother and render out scenes about 1.6 to 2.3 times faster than the M4. And the same goes for gaming, where you see about the same results with frame rates. Essentially, the M4 can do a lot of that work on a smaller scale and is decent enough for gaming as well. Although I'm not sure that you're buying a Mac to be a gaming machine, but if you enjoy hopping into a game just to break up the day once in a while, it's more than capable of doing that. That being said, I'm not so sure that it makes a ton of sense to buy the M4 Pro Mac Mini anymore. If you're getting into heavier workloads, you're probably going to want to start bumping up the specs, like the RAM and the storage, and since the 2025 Mac Studio came out, it doesn't take long for the M4 Pro Mac Mini to be just as expensive as the Studio. This particular model that I have here costs $21.99, which is actually more than the base Studio. And on the Studio, you get more ports with better specs, better chip performance, and a better media engine. So the M4 Pro just kind of feels like a tweener that sits between an affordable consumer device and a pro-level machine. At least on the MacBooks, it's easier to justify going from an Air to a Pro because you get a bigger battery, much wider port selection, better speakers, and a nicer display. But we can really only focus on performance alone on these minis. And personally, if I was just buying one of these as a regular consumer, I'd just be sticking with an M4. You can get a lot out of these, especially if you bump up the RAM and the storage a little. And when it starts to feel like it's not enough, I would just skip the Pro chip altogether and go directly to the Max. But I would love to know what you guys think here. Do any of you have an M4 Pro Mac Mini? And if you had to buy it again, would you get the same thing? Or would you maybe downgrade to an M4 or move up to the Mac Studio? Let me know in the comments down below. That's all I got for you today. I hope you found this video useful or enjoyable. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech related content or help me turn this base Mac Mini into a bedside alarm clock that uses the fan as white noise, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.